Good morning, everybody. Nerds Out of Water is a podcast brought to you by Michael Lobb and myself, David Camus. We are two good friends who have partnered on and off in business for over 20 years. Michael runs TeamScale, providing trusted technology advice and solutions to companies having trouble scaling up. He enables those businesses to grow and keep their technologies on track. David runs One Bright Cloud, where he heads up a team of techs and futurists looking at autonomous vehicles, AI, and digital transformation as a prerequisite to Industry 4.0. We challenge our own perspectives and try and see things from each other's. You don't need to agree, but after listening to this show, I'm fairly sure you'll have an idea on who we're talking about. So who are we chatting to today, David? As we enter our second Easter in lockdown, our guest today is from a boutique Brisbane-based web design studio who state that they actually care about their work. This enables them to help businesses and charities grow and achieve their goals. Okay. Our guest today is the director of Better Web Designs, the inspiring and amazing Sharon Templeton. Welcome, Sharon. Hi, David. How are you? I am very good. And Mike, sorry? Do we talk to him too? How are you? We can talk to Mike. He's always <laughs> we there. We can talk He's to always me if we like. <laughs> Sharon, I'm here. You, you've had a really interesting life. Um, tell me about yourself and how you've got to where you are at the moment. Okay. Uh, so, in all of my 48 years, I have done, um, well, now two things. So, for 25 years, I was a litigation lawyer. Uh, based in Brisbane, specialising in personal injuries. And the last couple of years I started dabbling in um, e-commerce and one thing led to another and now I am, um, I've started a digital agency agency actually, uh, specialising in SEO and website design. Mm -hmm. So quite different from where I've been. And what's that agency called? Better Website Design. Dot com dot au. That's easy to remember. Dot com dot au. (laughs) It is. It's easy to remember, simple to type in. Betterwebsitedesign.com.au And great for uh, SEO. That was the aim. (laughs) And what are you specialising in? Uh, Look, that's still developing at this stage. Um, The first few websites I've started are health and wellness area. Um, Mm. But I have a lot of experience with small businesses, tradespeople, construction areas, that sort of thing. So I understand those marketplaces fairly well. But there's not a lot of industries that I haven't covered in one way or another as a lawyer. Mm. As a lawyer? (laughs) Uh, So whilst it's not necessarily of uh, direct assistance in the digital agency, at least understanding the people and the terms and you know, what sort of things they might do or not do, uh, mm. I think that helps because if you don't understand the business, I don't think you can really SEO our website properly. Yep, I agree. I agree yeah. with that. Um, before you go on, Mike, um, have you found many of your previous employment have opportunities in your new employment? Because uh, many of us have sidekicks and, you know, I've got a number of e-commerce websites that just tick over in the background and I'm just yeah. wondering if you've got anyone that... Pre- Yeah, look, I mean, I think understanding, I did a lot of training uh, and learning around e-commerce focused largely on Amazon Marketplace, Um, but that translates really easily into just general search engine optimization and product listing, how to build a good product listing, you know, um, speaking to your customers and finding those buying keywords and looking for buying intent. Mm. Um, So it hasn't, again, probably been... Oh, I've got a couple of e-commerce sites going at the moment and um, the other side of what I do, apart from offering services to clients, is to start building my own yeah, portfolio of digital yep. assets. So, yep. um, And that, of course, has a large component for a lot of those sites uh, with affiliate sites and things in e-commerce. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Between um, the law and SEO, I guess ethics is a big part of both of those. I find that there's a lot of... Um, let's say SEO companies that aren't necessarily ethically based, they, you know, there's a lot of non, uh, how do you put this uh, in, a, in a polite way? Um, they're, they're cheating the system, I guess. So how, how do you find that your ethics has brought 
into that into this um, into your new role? Well, it's an interesting question, actually, Mike. Um, ethics for me was always at the foundation of what I thought I should be doing as a lawyer, um, mm. and it was really disappointing to see that that wasn't um, the foundation of many others' practices. Um, Ouch! <laughs> Keep that in mind. Difficult, um, but you know. I think it's become less of a focus for people perhaps as money became more of the the target. Um, But ethics for me, you know, I I, want to sleep at night and I want to make an app. I want to actually make a difference. So if I can do that, you know, I think the best way to do that is do that ethically. If you're Mm. doing it properly, um, then you'll get the results. If you're cheating the system... I think the system will catch up with you eventually because the system's always changing, the rules are always changing, and, you know, search engines like Google are actively trying to weed out all of those, Mm. you know, dodgy practices. So, you know, I just don't... I don't think it's a long-term game Mm. to uh, to, to try and cheat it. Yeah, I agree. It's always right, right, right things that humans will read and you don't need to worry about whether the algorithm changes or not. Yeah. To a degree. <laughs> to a degree. <laughs> At some point, someone's um, got to catch up with you. Yeah. Is there much of a difference in, in the terms of y- how you use your creativity between what you're doing in law and now what you're doing with e-commerce? Uh, look, I think there's certainly greater scope for um, my creative side in what I'm doing now. Uh, there was less scope for that you know, side of me in law because everything is um, largely rule-based, legislation-based, you're quite constrained mm. um, by what you can do. Certainly I saw some creative practices adopted, but that brings us back to the ethics point. So yeah. um, for me, those weren't um, weren't areas in which I wanted to express my creativity. Uh, but, yeah, so now it's been more enjoyable to be able to focus on that side and be more rounded rather than, um, mm. I guess, focus only on the analytical so has your have you always had the creativity? Has that always been sitting there in the background? It has been. What has it been doing up until now then? Well, um, it's the reason I have that large shed full of power tools. Um, that's where I tend <laughs> to let my creativity get unleashed. Um, you know, I've you know, built a few things around the home. and Sounds a little Wolf Creek craterish, but I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't have barrels down the back, David, so um, we should be fine. But, yeah, <laughs> no, no, it's uh, just, just timber, just lumber and timber that I use my creativity nice. on, mm. yeah. That's great. Very interesting. So, so what technology do you now use? What what do you step into? Okay, so the websites that we're building are WordPress. I mean, it is the most popular platform, I think, for most business websites. I think even the White House, the new administration, used a WordPress website. Mm-hmm. Um, there's actually a few. There's actually a few major newspapers who are based on WordPress as well. Whether yeah. it's just using it as a content engine or a or a display thing as well. So yeah. Yeah, so look, I mean, there's a good reason for that. It's got a lot of flexibility. It's certainly, um, we don't use template websites. Mm. Um, We're customising really to the client to make sure that it speaks to their customers. But that's what we're using at the moment. And then all the bits that you add on, um, you know, the paid Mm -hmm. uh, tools that you use to make sure that your SEO is really targeted and going to return the best uh, revenue for the investment. So... Yeah, there's lots of different tools like SEMrush and things that we're using. Yep. Yep. Mm. Oh. Okay. With, with your clients that you're working with, how do you speak, you know, you, you mentioned just before speaking to, to their brand and to their, their culture and their things like that. How do you, what sorts of things do you go through to get to that point where you can understand that fully? Yeah, that's, um, that's a tricky one sometimes. And uh, so far, I think the first um, couple of clients I've had, I've known well or getting to know well. And so in getting to know them, you see a bit more of their personality. Some of them have started websites in the past and that gives you a hint as to what they're sort of, um, who they're targeting, who their ideal client might be, who's going to gel with them. But, mm-hmm. you know, that that's one of the, um, the transferable skills, I suppose, yep. that I brought to this in that in my prior life, um, I had to read people pretty well. And, yeah. you know, search for, ask the right questions. It's about knowing how to ask the right questions, but then listening 
Um, mm. So those are skills that I'd certainly developed and honed over the over the years, and I've just brought those across to what I'm doing now. Yeah, and I think those soft skills are are really missing from some. Um, software development and and also website design companies where they there's there's a lot of technology but there's not a lot of soft skills in terms of understanding people and managing that that side of it yeah look i think that's it, it tends to be a bit of the you know a personality type perhaps it's drawn to that in the background or what they see is in an in the background sort of role um mm. and if, if you can't yourself have that you know person focused approach i think you need to find someone who can and team can, up with yeah. them Mm, so do definitely. you um, have your ha, have staff on, on your books or do you outsource? Um, I'm outsourcing at the moment and just growing as we need and testing sort of the thing. It, you know, I'm in a bit of a learning phase, obviously. Yep, yep. It's still pretty new, so I don't want to mm. outsource everything and not know what they're doing. Um, yeah. So just feeling my way along, and um, but with certainly a view with outsourcing down the track or full, get, bringing on full-time employees. Mm. So as we went through 2020 last year, and we try not to talk about the negative sides of it, how did you keep yourself positive to move forward? Because this work would have been in its infancy as we in 2020. Yeah, look, I oh, think... Oh, in 2019, I should think. I Look, I suspect it, it was, but it was, um, it was easy for me to be... It, it wasn't on my radar. That's the short mm. answer to it. Um, you know, I hadn't at any point leading up to when I ceased work on the 9th of September, designed to stop work as a lawyer. Um, mm. And then I did. So it it moved quite rapidly from there and things just seemed to slot into place the way, you know, life can sometimes when, um, mm. when you sort of just let go a bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose during lockdown you had a beautiful area to live in and wonderful neighbours, but anyway... <laughs> Well, the neighbours are a bit noisy at times, I have to be honest, David, but... Um, yeah, I can people. hear your neighbours from here sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, both of you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I mean, working from home was something we were, I was used to, thankfully. Um, having everybody else working from home and schooling from home was different. Mm. Um, but, no, look, in the end, the change, as I said, it wasn't a conscious one. It sort of came about... Um, just fairly fluidly and organically, yeah. and I and I couldn't be happier to be frank. Good, good. So and they say tw they say that the twenty twenty um, pandemic has actually reshaped a lot of business as well. So you know, I think we're all in businesses that have, um, in some ways, not been as affected as other industries. And in, and I'm guessing in the e commerce and SEO space that would have actually gone a lot up upwards rather than. Um, going down in terms of revenue and things like that. Is that would that be accurate? Look, I think that's right. Um, there's certainly been a lot of um, a lot more interest in the online mm. world, and what it did do was um, it forced a lot of people to get online who had been resisting that change mm. for a very long time. Um, the law firm that I was working at, they had remote workers and they had that capability, but having everyone to actually have to do that was a big leap for them. But now that they've seen it's possible, mm. that the wheels don't fall off, you know, that's becoming more of a reality for more people on a on a more regular basis. And I don't think that was an isolated incident. No, no, you know, businesses, businesses went online, some of them in a heck of a hurry, and they yeah. got a presence up there. But, you know, I think now we'll be seeing some of those businesses step back and go, well, now that everyone's still used to being online, why aren't they finding us? Why isn't our mm. website doing yep, this? Yep. Why aren't we doing that? Yeah. You know, what else can we do with it as everyone gets used to it? And the number of websites that popped up during 2020 were just amazing. I bet it was. the statistics, the, the number of sites that are become operational, who web domain names have been reserved, a uh, massive, just unbelievable increase. Um, mm. All around the globe, that is. So w talking about all around the globe... How have you actually stepped out of Australia or are you just working within Australia at the moment? Um, at the moment, my client's based in Australia. Yep. Um, the latest client that I brought on, though, she was previously based in the UK and her target audience is really the US and the UK. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of the e-commerce um, stuff that I'd done was based in the US. 
So I'd actually been um, exporting from China into the US, selling in the US. So I never actually sold Drop the product. Dropshipping or? Uh, no, no, no. Full on um, import oh, okay. export. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I'd never actually sold a product in Australia, but I'd sold in the US and met a lot of United States based people. So, you know, just understanding some of the lingo, and I can certainly still check with them about different things if I don't understand a term. Which is, mm. I found a really good thing to do, actually, because some of the terms we just use all the time in Australia are really quite offensive to a lot of Americans. Yeah. Always best to do a double check. Yep. Yeah. Do you, do you find that the work style is different as well? Like the way that they're, the way that they're different, that we approach work? Yeah. Look, I think the intensity is different, you know, just in their, their personalities. Mm-hmm. Um, the way they, you know... <laughs> Yeah, just the way they speak, I suppose, too. One thing I noticed, um, they're really polite in the way. Mm. There's swear words just don't enter their in stratosphere the US in the US. US. Mm-hmm. In the US, um, they rarely swear, whereas in Australia it's become in a lot of places pretty commonplace. Very common. Yeah. We've replaced um, punctuation with swear words, I think. I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, being the mother of three teenagers, I can attest to the fact that it occurs in our <laughs> house. So, um, and one's on a construction site full time. So we, yep. we hear some awesome stuff. Interesting new stuff, I'm sure. <laughs> always learning. Always learning, Mike. Yeah. So now with, you're with, working. Oh, go on then. Yeah, oh, no, I was going to say with your family, um, you know, with your, you've got teenage kids and you've, you've got them at home sometimes and your husband's working from home. How do you find time to balance that? between your work and your life? Yeah, well, that's been um, a big part of the change since I've left the law, actually. I thought I had a pretty good balance previously because I did largely work from home. Um, but that's really come to the forefront, I guess, of my uh, mind now. I, I've really strict on my morning routine. I've developed mm-hmm. a morning routine that gets me being more reflective straight up and it gets me moving every morning um, and focusing just on mindset for the day. I found that to be really helpful. So was that similar to my morning routine, getting up about 10 o'clock, um, having a couple of coffees, and then having a, a nanny nap about 10, uh, 10.30? Uh, no, 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 not okay, at all. Okay, no, just making no, sure. No, clear, to be clear, no, not at all. Uh, quite different, season early of rise <laughs> and um, some yoga. You know, I've actually um, done a lot of work around mindset over the last few years anyway as part of the e-com. You know, you find a lot of entrepreneurs mm. in that space are really heavily focused on mindset and for good reason um are you you journaling sharon off and on off and on i've taken to um i'm using a a sort of high product high performance and productivity planner at the moment which has a series of mindfulness sort of questions in the morning and then a place to reflect on those things in the the evening really holistic so it's business focused but also family focused and that's been really helpful to draw my attention back to the fact that there are people in my life who, you know, can be amazing when they're not just being all hormonal. So as the as you're coming through with your website, so as you're designing, mm. is there any tech that's now in place that you wish you'd had as a law, as a lawyer? Gosh, um, I don't think the two really marry up from a tech perspective. To be honest, I mean, as a lawyer, I was probably more versed in the tech that was available and utilised it more than a lot of others. Um, You know, I'd been previously involved in a different firm who had a big case management system. I I helped set that up and make all the workflows for it. Um, And the workflow system that my most recent firm had, I was probably one of the ones that used it the most. Um, You know, I remember when we first had that lockdown in March last Mm -hmm. year, Um, I was to attend a multi-person mediation, so there would normally be, you know, 12 people in one room, and then you'd Mm. have breakout rooms, physical rooms. The mediator had to um, deal with that going on a video call on a Zoom, and um, he was not coping too well. He lost people um, in the ether. So, you know, happily I had experience in those, Mm. with that technology previously, um, and I've just carried that over to doing what I'm doing now. Certainly if I hadn't used that, in the, and that was all e-commerce, I should say, e-commerce mm. experience with that, that sort of technology um, and some of the groups that I've been in. Mm. Um, but, yeah, if I'd been 
one of those tech adverse lawyers come into this, it would have been a much more difficult transition. I think a lot of businesses thought it was a very difficult transition, even mm. ones that thought they were um, in front of the technologies. Yeah. They found all of a sudden having everybody working from home just crashed everything. But um, I, I've been on, I go on a weekly advisory board meeting and we often have breakout rooms and they're all on Zoom. So yeah. um, as you're well aware, it's quite easy. And I think people are now learning that capability very quickly. Um, mm. Michael and I uh, both have outsourced technology people and we, we do, we've always done um, video conferencing and remote ca communication. So it actually works quite well. Uh, but getting some big businesses on board was quite hard during the time. Yeah, look, I mean, I think ultimately if the court system in Australia can do it, um, yeah. there's no reason any business yep. cannot do it. Courts aren't um, always forward thinking with the technology, mm. um, but they've I embraced it. All different platforms, of course, because you wouldn't want to be consistent, but, you know. Mm. And, and how, do you, how do you convince people that are tech adverse to, to try it out? Look, I've always just focused on the dollars, to be honest. Um, if you Good can point. show there's a benefit in the dollars, particularly when you're talking to business people, um, then that te tends to get their attention. And to be mm. honest, I don't think if, if there's not a case to be made with the money in mind, why do it? You've yeah. got to have some goal, and if you don't have your goal in mind at the start, what are you measuring against? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Are you a social media person? Do you do a lot of social media, whether it be Facebook or Instagram uh, or the like? TikTok. Not really a social media person. TikTok. Uh, I have heard there's a TikTok. I'm not familiar with it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, look, I don't. I tend to be on Facebook for personal reasons, um, off and on. I'm really not the person you want to get hold of that way. Um, mm. Instagram still scares me a bit, to be honest. And um, although I have fo followed Arnold Schwarzenegger of late, and he's got a really cute donkey, so that's been that's been a find on Instagram. On Instagram, okay. Yeah. And I do mean a physical donkey; it's not a euphemism. A real donkey. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing we won't follow through on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I get told a lot that yeah. I post on Facebook uh, by my wife, who posts on my behalf. Right, right, right. Yeah, okay. And uh, then I have uh, different people who post um, around the business and the business entities, mm. so that always, always works well. Yeah, look, I mean, that's something that um, I did quite a bit of and um, with the e-commerce stuff that seemed to be, you know, more about just building that brand presence and being in yeah. all of the spaces where your customers might be. Um, I certainly think it's becoming more prevalent and people are looking for content, particularly video content's becoming huge. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, so places like YouTube and um, TikTok, although I had to explain to my daughter the other day that guinea pigs don't hibernate because she'd seen a TikTok video that suggested they did. Yeah. Use a bigger hammer than they hibernate. Yeah, so, you know, there, it, you, do you, content, do you think that's content a big quality problem? there is not great. Well, I think content what? quality there is not, it's not monitored as, you know, mm. There's been an ongoing debate about um, the quality of content and the bigger platforms, the older platforms like Facebook, um, are trying to tighten up on it. But mm. how you but do the, that... Even they've been unsuccessful in most cases or yeah. you know, they're, exactly. they're struggling and with it. So. Exactly. Um, which just, you know, I think comes back to then education. You know, you've got to educate mm. the users because you can't police the platform. Um, yeah. So, you know, yeah, I, I think that's the real concern. Yeah, I mean, to me, if you if you heard it on any, any social media platform, it pays to go and research it a little bit more to find out whether it's an actual thing or not. I mean, if you're going to pay for it, yeah, 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 completely. I think that's mm. right. So, but I mean, everyone has their preferred platform, and you know, one that they're really comfortable with. Um, there's a guy who has a he's got a really multi million dollar construction company, and he loves Facebook, and all he wants to do is Facebook advertising. He doesn't right. see the point of a website. Um, until someone explained to him that, well, you know, half the people in the world aren't on Facebook. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, it, same with community organisations. I've seen a few of them, you know, set up a Facebook group and discuss things on there, but then they realise that they're missing half of that community, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, so what are your thoughts about Google? Google? And the Google News and... 
withdrawing Google and everything around Google from Australia? Yeah, look, I think if Google follows the money, they'll realise that that's not in their best interests. Um, but ultimately, they're not the only search platform here. Oh. They may be the most popular and they may think they command the market, but, um, you know, you take something away from an Australian and they'll find something to replace it pretty quickly. So if they do or they don't, it doesn't bother me. In terms of what I do for business, I mean, you optimise for all search engines anyway, not yep. just Google. Yep. Mm. So um, I think it's a hollow thread on their part and I don't know what the answer is in terms of paying for news content. I understand where the news organisations are coming from. You know, it pays mm. to produce quality content that is fact-checked and everything else. Um, but that's, you know... That's but as they say, all they are is a link to that those news articles. Yeah. And they always end up back at the, the company's site... Yeah, and, I mean, we've all Googled um, things and hit on a link that's taken you to a news site who's locked down their content until you pay yeah. for it. So I think it does come back to the news providers as to whether they make their content freely accessible or not. Yep. Because it's it's sort of like, you know, charging the index provider, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I totally provider, agree. The index provider for the cost of making the books. And that's all, yeah. all, all That's what I believe they are. I just believe they're providing the link and they have solutions around it. But yeah. there's differences yeah, of opinion. There's differences of opinion and, and you know, as much, as much as we want to, from my, from, my, from my way of thinking, as much as we want to bash Google up, I, I probably would side with them over the me, the, some of the media organisations that are, pushing this as well so um you know which not... all end up as global media um, organizations anyway mm. there's very few truly australian ones well i think if you look at a lot of the media sites too you know they're making money from getting traffic to their sites so are they shooting oh, absolutely themselves in the foot? Yeah. yeah and that there has to be a way to to manage this whether it's through a royalty system or through you know um uh, sub some sort of subscription. Google are already paying a lot of money for that for that content. Um, they probably just want to, you know, there's there's got to be a middle ground somewhere for them mm. that's going to benefit the public. I mean, at the end of the day, journalism is journalism because people need to understand what's going on in the world and they need to hear the truth. Not not, not that uh, you know, not the hibernation patterns of uh, small rodents. That Indeed. Incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, and it wasn't that long ago that YouTube went through this with um, music being played in the background of anyone and everyone's um, YouTube video. So they had mm. to lock down video that included, or they all they did is wiped the soundtrack, didn't they, from right. from the videos? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've worked in the music industry for a while now, and currently working with a publishing company that is you know having to deal with some of those issues now as well and again it all comes back to royalties and copyright ownership and um again I, i'm not a lawyer but <laughs> um you no, know I'd, I. <laughs> if i <laughs> if i wanted my music to be played on a youtube video i'd probably feel okay about that and i'd probably just want to talk to someone and say yeah that's fine get permit get some sort of permission base basis set up but then you know i can understand that there's some um, record companies who are missing out because since streaming has started and CD sales have gone down, so they want to be able to make some money out of that. Right, and look, I mean, again, I think if you come back to that principle of following the money, if they follow mm. the money and realise that that's where the money is, they just need to tailor their way of doing business to make sure that they're capturing their fair share. Yeah. Um, it, it comes back to the content producers, and if you're producing great content, then you need to make sure that you're getting paid for that, and that's really yep. up to you, I think. Mm. Yeah. It was a debate that came up in the autonomous vehicle industry recently um, where the images from the LiDAR and radar that are being captured, who owns them, especially if there are images of you or me or corporate signatures, uh, logos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it was a debate that came up and hasn't yet been resolved. But Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you, yeah... Mm. Yeah, it is. I think, you know, for me, the question is more about what, where does that information go and what purpose is it being used for? Yeah. You have to understand the ownership behind it, but, you know, are you asking a question you don't need an answer to or are you asking a question you need an answer to? Yeah. Because if Information that's being... is always being sold. 
sound mm. kept somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Mm, that's the problem as we it, it comes back Who's to what we were talking about at the beginning ethics yeah. isn't it yeah back to the ethics you know in china everybody uh, is captured how many times a day and the same in london um in the uk but not across the uk in australia i think it's only in the capital cities that we're all on camera all the time mm. yeah i mean that's the world we're in isn't it so mm-hmm. there's a lot of people who don't agree with that world big brother's watching me yeah well. big brother Unless you have pants off Friday, I mean, you're probably going to be okay in most places, aren't you? Well, I was having a pants off Thursday. Hang on, have you got pants off? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Hold on. This is a podcast, isn't it? Yeah. No video. I've got pants for radio as well. (laughs) Radio pants. Um, We've got three questions that we ask everyone just um, to get an idea about who you are and where you're going. Um, What would you do differently if you had a chance in your career? Oh, gosh. Um, I actually don't think everything um, considered I would do anything differently uh, simply because where I am right now uh, is really working for me and I can't say that if I'd done anything differently... In the past, I'd be in the same place. Great answer. I mean, yeah. That's, a a, of, wow, that's an amazing yeah. answer. It's, a, it's very, wi- very wise. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you weren't doing what you're doing now or, or what you were doing prior to that, what do you think you would have been doing? Like, what, Where do you think your career could have gone if you hadn't been doing, hadn't got into law and then e-commerce? Oh, gosh. Um, again, you know, I don't – I think – when I left school in, gosh, was it 1984, 1989? It was a long time ago. Um, That's the year I came back. No, just after the year I came to Australia. All right. Well, we all know you're older than me, David. Ouch! Um, however, yeah, look, I, I think my world was so small. Maybe I would have travelled more. Um, mm. And certainly that's something that I want to be doing in the future when we're allowed out of the country again. Mm. Um, so, yeah, travelling more. If I'm not working, I'd like to be travelling Mm. Um, in terms of other career choices, gosh, I just don't think my world was big enough when I was 17, 18, even up to 30, to have considered anything else. Were you always in Brisbane? Yes. Yeah, wow. Um, do you have any predictions for the future of, uh, of the industry that you're in at the moment and, and technology around the uh, e-commerce and SEO side of things? And what are you looking forward to about that? Um. Look, I think in terms of both my former um, industry and the current one, it's just they're growing in terms of their use of technology. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a lot of all those non-tech industries are having to become way more aware of what's available, how to use it best, how to get it to, you know, use it as a tool, how to use it as a tool to advance their business goals. Um, being on the tech side now, I mean, there's just, there's work for everyone. There's, in terms of the digital assets, the marketplaces are going crazy. Um, there's a lot of money to be made in, in producing and selling high quality digital assets. And, you know, you can tell by the corporates getting into that marketplace that that's where the money is in the future. So if that's not part of your personal portfolio in the future, it'd be, um, Googling digital assets building or something like that <laughs> you and figuring it. out uh, how to get into it. You heard it here on this podcast. Dis- digital assets building. Google it now or Bing if we don't have Google. Well, actually, or, yeah. or depending on <laughs> when, when you're hearing it. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, yeah, look, I think it, it's just going to go more and more techy and there'll be more and more platforms coming as everyone tries to find something that suits them. Um, but you've got so many people in the world with so many different ideas. It's... There's just going to be platform after platform after platform. Yeah, there is. Yeah. There already is and they're already coming. I right. agree. Yeah, yeah. So it's just going to be, you know, change will be the new normal and people who aren't good with change are really going to have to find a big rock to hide mm. under or um, just try and adapt. Try and adapt. Yep. Sharon, thank you very much for coming. Can you give yourself a plug one more time? Uh, my name is Sharon Templeton and if you need help getting your website working for you, call me... Um, my website is betterwebsitedesign.com.au. I'm based in Brisbane, but can work with you anywhere in the world. Wonderful. Thank you Great. very much for your time today. Thanks, Thank David. you, Thanks, Sharon. Mike. That's amazing.
What's that? Do you continue saving your password in an Excel spreadsheet? Well, my friend, either your habits need to be changed or you are going to be exposed to a cyber attack very soon. At TeamScale, we have decades of experience assisting our customers in securing their business and optimising their process, making them more competitive in the market. Be bold, be smarter, be faster with TeamScale. Visit TeamScale.com to learn more.